What's up? Welcome back. Or I guess this is a tutorial, so you've probably never seen my channel before. I make all sorts of Fortnite content, gameplay videos, tips and tricks, all of the sorts. So feel free to click that subscribe button if you enjoy that sort of stuff. Now I know I said Fortnite for all you Call of Duty players, you're probably sick of hearing about Fortnite. But this tutorial will also help you figure out how to use this thing on Warzone, on Modern Warfare in general. If you get stuck or it doesn't work, please, before you drop a comment, refer to this timestamp. This timestamp is where I explain a ton of videos very helpful tips to get this to work. I explain the most common issues people have with this, and 90% of the time, these tips and tricks will fix your issue. Let's get started. Starting off with the simplest task, yet this always seems to be the part that people struggle with the most, which is simply plugging the controller in. And once you've successfully plugged it in, your light should be a solid color, or in some rare cases, it's completely off, but it didn't flash yellow or anything, it's just off. As long as you're able to locate the wireless controller option within SCP toolkit, then you're good. You might see something like this when you plug it in. This orange bar glows and it shuts off. Next, you're gonna go ahead and go to the top link down in my description, and it's going to be a link to the SCP toolkit download. You're gonna click on that, and you're going to go ahead and click download on this. Once the download is ready, go ahead and open it. It'll ask you for permission. Go ahead and click yes, and it should bring you to this menu. Now you're gonna go ahead and uncheck the install Bluetooth driver and install DualShock 3 driver. You just want this box checked. You're gonna go ahead and click the drop down arrow and find wherever it says wireless controller. If wireless controller is not coming up, go ahead and unplug and replug your controller in. Give SCP Toolkit a restart to identify that again. Click the drop down box and once again find if it says wireless controller. Now if at this point it still does not say wireless controller, there's one of two problems. If you see a box that says strike pack that's not the right one, don't click that box. You need the box that says wireless controller. Now what you're going to do is select wireless controller. Once again, make sure these two boxes are unchecked, leaving only the DualShock 4 driver box checked. And go ahead and click install. It's going to come up with a ton of pop ups on the right side. That's completely normal don't worry about this and just wait for it to install the drivers in what and once they install, it's going to go ahead and make that noise, come up with more pop-ups on the right side. And at this point, your controller light is going to be blinking blue if it's successfully installed. Now, to get it to stop blinking blue, it's pretty simple. You just unplug it and you re-plug it in. It's going to go ahead and make that connection sound. It's going to give you that pop, and it should be a solid blue color. Once you've done this, we want to make sure that your strike pack is up to date. Go ahead and click on that second link down in the description. Come here and click on this. Open it up, and it'll show something that looks like like this. Now for your device to be found, you actually have to take your strike pack off of your controller and just have the strike pack plugged in. Once it's just the strike pack plugged in, this will come up. You click on this. Use the latest version available. Check that box and continue and begin update. Update completed. You can X out of that. And one last thing to get your touchpad to work is to come back to this download tab, that second link down in the description. But this time, scroll down to the Strike Pack Mod Central Configuration tool. Click here to download this. And once again, with this application open, you're going to want to just have your Strike Pack plugged in, no controller. Click on the gray PS4 controller. Click on the drop down box that has the line connecting to the touchpad that says touch right there. Go ahead and click on that and click that to share. That should automatically change your share button to touch and then save settings to strike pack. This message will come up, you click OK, click done. Attach your strike pack back onto your controller. You might need to give it an unplug and a replug in. And now you're good to go ahead and launch your game. And at this point, your paddle should be working in game. But don't click off the video yet because I have a very important tip that's going to save you a lot of frustrations. First of all, I just want to ask you very quickly if this video did help you get your strike pack working, please go ahead and drop a like on the video. It helps out the channel a ton. And I play full time with a strike pack. I've been using it for over two years now. So if you enjoy seeing content produced with the strike pack, then feel free to click that subscribe button. And this leaves one last issue. I also learned this the hard way when I first got my PC. You probably noticed that when you just went in game to test your strike pack, you didn't have any audio. Now here's how you fix that. You're just going to go ahead and head down to this. You're going to right click on your sound icon, your speakers icon, and you're going to go ahead and open sound settings. In sound settings, you're going to go to manage sound devices, and it's going to take you to a tab that looks like this. Now your strike pack is going to show up as a USB device, but it's also going to say speakers. And for whatever reason, as soon as you plug in your strike pack to the back of your 
PC, both your output and your input are going to automatically default to the strike pack. So the fix to this is very simple. Go ahead and find your USB audio device. The port that I plugged it into was the fourth one. So mine says four dash USB audio device. That's going to be my strike pack. Basically what I'm going to do is click on this and click disable. And then I'm going to head down here to input devices and I'm going to click on this and click disable. But then you can simply X out of that and you're good to go. Your strike packs working, your audio is working, everything's smooth sailing. Every single time you start up your PC, all you have to do is plug in your controller, turn on your game and you'll be good to go. No extra steps, nothing more to do besides that. Common issues that have come up in the past are the following. If something like this looks familiar where your controller light bar lights up yellow, orangish, and then flashes and goes away, then you have an issue and there could be a few different things happening. First of all, a lot of times when you first get your strike pack, your cord doesn't necessarily fit smoothly into this little socket. Sometimes you kind of got to forcefully jam it. So when you plug it in, you should hear and feel it click into place. If you push it in, but you don't feel anything click, you need to push a little harder. The next fix is probably the most common, but it's also the one that involves the most headache. On the back of your PC, there's going to be a bunch of different USB ports. Now, some of these USB ports are simply there to power things. So it'll power your lights, it'll power stuff like that. But if you're plugging in something like a webcam, a controller, a mic, something like that it has to be plugged into a port that corresponds with the motherboard the bad part about this is that every PC is different so it tends to just be trial and error so what I suggest doing is taking the other end of this cable that comes with your strike pack you plug in the USB end into a spot on the back of your computer make sure it's not one of the front ones plug in the other end and then plug in your controller see if anything lights up see what happens if nothing happens for that one unplug it take the other end plug it into a different USB port, take this part, plug it back in, and just rinse and repeat. It's definitely an annoying process, but if it does work, then it's worth it. Another problem that's recently popped up is that if you're using a version one PS4 controller, a version one PS4 controller is from years and years ago. It's a very old PS4 controller. They now have the version two PS4 controller. Your strike pack is only going to work on the version two controller. And one last thing, I've done some testing and sometimes when I plug in my controller to my PC, when the drivers are not installed on the strike pack, nothing happens. There's no yellow light that flashes on and off. There's no blue light, there's no light. However, when this happened, I was still able to locate my wireless controller in my SCP toolkit. I could still install the drivers to this and after I installed the drivers, then the light came on. I don't think that's a very common problem, but it definitely can happen. So do as you please with that information. If if you're still confused, still struggling with it, drop a comment down below. I will do my absolute best to get to all of the comments. Or you can shoot me a DM over on Twitter at Carter2K20. One more issue I've just discovered recently is that there's five different models of the strike pack. If you take your strike pack off and look at the little sticker on the inside, right here it'll say model with CM followed by a bunch of zeros and then a number at the end. On the model number, the only number that you care about is the last one. That number could be one, two, three, four, or five. And those identify all the different versions of the Strike Pack that Collective Minds has released. Here's the weird part. If you order your Strike Pack off of the Collective Minds website, you get sent the latest version. You get sent the 8.5 version. However, every other place that you can buy it from, whether that's Walmart, Best Buy, Amazon, all of those strike packs are the 8.3 model. What I found is that the 8.5 model does not really work well on PC. I was helping someone that had the latest version, the 8.5 version, and he would plug in his controller in his strike pack, and it did the same thing that a lot of you guys having troubles is doing. His light bar flashed yellow and then turned off. However, in his SCP toolkit, it still showed up as wireless controller. There was still a wireless controller option. So we clicked on the wireless controller option and installed the drivers anyways. And once he installed the drivers, his light bar turned blue. However, as soon as he unplugged his controller and replugged it back in, he would have to go back into SCB Toolkit and reinstall the drivers every single time he unplugged and replugged in his controller. But it did work once he installed the drivers every single time he turned on his PC. So it might just be a who 
hoop that you gotta get through to be able to use your strike pack on PC. Or you can return your latest model and go on Amazon and get the 8.3 model, which works flawlessly on PC. And that is my last tip that I have available in my knowledge as of now. I'm sure more will come up in the future, so if you are having trouble still, go ahead and drop a comment. I'll make sure to get back to you. Hope I helped you, and I hope to see you guys in another video. Peace out.